Hello, Mr. Biter here with the notes on motion, moving things, things going from place to place. The words to know, reference point, speed, frame of reference, relative motion, velocity, acceleration, distance time graph, speed time graph, meter. Key questions, the things we should be able to answer by the end of these notes in this unit. How do we know something is moving? What is relative motion? How is speed calculated? What are the types of speed? What are velocity and acceleration? How do you read a distance time graph? How do you read a speed time graph? So first of all, how do we know something is moving? Well, we know something is moving because its position changes in relation to something else. We have to have a frame of reference to see if something is moving in relation to something else. This is called relative motion. And what is relative motion? Well, this is how we know something is really moving. And we have to have something to compare the motion to. So everything is moving relative to something else. So everything is moving. Now, everything around us is moving. But it's all moving relative to something else. So that frame of reference, though, determines how it's moving. What direction is it moving? How fast is it moving? That rate of motion. So it's all relative. Let's look at a classic example of relative motion. From the point of view of a person standing on a train platform, the boy is not moving. The train and the people on it are moving past it. However, from the point of view of a person riding the train, the girl is not moving. The train station and the person standing on the platform are moving past them. So this is all about perspective. If you are on the train, that girl relative to you is not moving, and that boy is moving past you. But for him, he is not moving, but she is. How is speed calculated? What are the types of speed? This is calculated using the equation speed equals distance divided by time. Right? We have to determine the rate. So this is the equation S equals D divided by T. So for example, if you take 180 seconds to walk from science to tech class in Mr. Bryden's room, that's 360 meters away, your speed is 2 meters per second. Because if it's 360 meters divided by 180 seconds, that's 2. And notice how we abbreviate meters per with that slash seconds. This is what's called your average speed. Not to be confused with instantaneous speed. Now you probably, when you go class to class, you don't go at a constant speed. More than likely you stop at your locker, you talk to friends, or walk quickly to catch up with someone. At any instant, your speed could be 0 meters per second if you are at your locker, or 2 meters per second if you're walking fast because you're late for class. Instantaneous speed is therefore the speed of an object at any one instant of time. So if we measured you at your locker, it might be 0 meters per second. But overall, from one distance to another, that's your average. Instantaneous is one moment. What are velocity and acceleration? Well, velocity is speed in a given direction. So we have to have not only the speed, like 15 kilometers per hour north, and that north is the direction. This is a vector quantity, so we need to know what direction it is. That's what makes it a velocity versus just speed. Acceleration, also because it's based on velocity, has a directional component, and it's the change in velocity. So anytime you change velocity, you are accelerating. If you're speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. And you can calculate acceleration by finding the difference in your speed and dividing that by time. Now when we look at speed and acceleration, often we're going to look at graphs. And we need to be able to read a distance time graph. And in a distance time graph, we can compare the speed of objects that are plotted on that graph. At the x-axis, we have time and the distance is going to be on that side y-axis. Here we have a distance time graph. 
and we have three objects. And a few things to keep in mind. The steeper it is, the faster that object is. The lower it is, the slower it is. So lower is slower. And if we notice here, if it's a flat line on a distance time graph, that means that there's no change in distance. It's stationary. It's not moving. So this object right here is not moving. A curved line shows acceleration, something getting faster and faster. Now, we know how to read a distance time graph. Let's look at a speed time graph. And in a speed time graph, the time's again on the x-axis, but st speed is plotted on the y-axis. And this compares the acceleration of objects. So when we're looking at a speed time graph, we can see a uniform acceleration. It's a straight line, right? The speed is increasing. Here, speed doesn't change, so it's a steady speed. It's like you got the cruise control on a car on. The same speed this whole time. And then we have more acceleration here, and the bricks are put on, slowing down here. That's deceleration. Now look at each of these. What do you think is happening in each of these graphs? Notice it's velocity or speed on this side and time. So we know these are graphs of acceleration.